Welcome back. All right, now, where were we? The next part of the NOM section deals with the attenuation applied to open channels. When multiple channels are open, the mixer will attenuate each one to help balance the output gain. Now, by default, it will add one step of attenuation every time the number of open mics doubles. So let's set this up. We'll set our max num back open to four so that all of our speakers can be open if they want to, but we'll have John be the only one speaking. Now, because he's the only one speaking, he's not attenuated. But when Paul joins him, we have doubled the mics from one to two, as you can see here. So now they are both being attenuated by three decibels. Now you can change the size of this attenuation step. If I change this to four decibels, then you'll see that the gain is being attenuated by four decibels. Now if we open George and Ringo, then we've once again doubled the number of mics from two to four. So their mixer will add another step of attenuation, and they're all brought down by eight decibels. And you can see how much that is right down here at the bottom of the gain meter. Now you can adjust the maximum attenuation with this knob as well. Let's say we don't want them to ever be attenuated more than six decibels. Well, you can see that that's how much they're being given. Let's set that back to 20. Now, if you select linear attenuation, then the mixer will apply one step of attenuation for each additional open mic rather than when the number doubles. So you can see that if we select this, then now we have 12 decibels of attenuation because we had four for the second one, eight for the third one, and 12 for the fourth one that's open. Now you'll want to adjust these to whatever you feel is appropriate for your venue. And finally, the response time adjusts how quickly this attenuation is applied. All right, now let's go back to learn about the other modes of this mixer. You have three options, automatic, priority, and filibuster. If a channel is set to priority mode, let's set them all to priority mode, then you must also assign that channel a priority number. Now, number one is the lowest priority, and 10,000 is the highest priority. So the higher the number, the higher the priority. On priority mode, only the channel with the highest priority will be gated open. You can assign multiple channels to have the same priority number if you'd like. Right now, they all have the priority number of one, so they're all being gated open. Now, let's give them different priorities. Let's give Paul a priority of 57, and George a priority of 5,338. You can see that George is the only one that's being gated open. Now this can be very useful for emergency announcements or for the moderator of a debate. The third mode is called filibuster mode. When filibuster mode is on, only one channel at a time is allowed to be open, but it cannot be overridden. It will stay open as long as the channel is reaching its threshold, and every other channel must wait its turn. So, if John is conducting a filibuster as he is now, and Paul, George, and Ringo are all screaming at him to stop, their gates will not open until Paul is done. So Paul will be muted now, and you can see that now Ringo has the floor. This can be used a lot in legislative circumstances, as you could probably guess from its name. Now, one other important thing to remember is that a channel will only interact with other channels when they're on the same mode. For instance, a priority channel will override other priority channels, but it does not turn off a channel set to automatic. For instance, if I set Paul to automatic, then his channel is gated open even though Ringo is on filibuster. So a filibuster channel will not allow any other filibuster channels to turn on, but one that's set to priority or automatic will still be able to be opened. So you can get a sense of how much customization you have over the way in which this mixer chooses which channels are allowed to be open. So that is the gated automatic mixer. Hopefully you've now got a pretty good grasp on how it works and the difference between it and the gain sharing automatic mixer. On your next installation, you should be fully prepared to be able to choose which one is the right one and use them to your maximum potential. You're ready now to move on to the assessment for this course, so thank you, we'll see you next time.